All right, Steelers fans, welcome to the third episode from the third day of camp of Steelers Today. I'm your host, Eddie Provident. With me is our editor-in-chief at DK Pittsburgh Sports and our Steelers expert, Dale Lawley. Uh, Dale, we actually, even though no pads like we thought there would be today, uh, we actually do have some news to report on for a change, uh, some actual news. Uh, we've got some injury updates that you want to share with us, right? Yeah, no pads until they get down to, to Heinz Field. Uh, that's a part of the new uh, agreement this year between the NFL and the NFLPA. They couldn't go in pads uh, for the first five days of camp. So that'll take us through Monday. The Steelers are off Monday, obviously. So when they go back to Heinz Field on Tuesday, uh, they'll get back into pads. And then, of course, uh, Wednesday will be the first open practice with fans. But uh, to your point uh, about that, uh, Kendrick Green was given the day off today uh, for personal reasons, according to Mike Tomlin. Uh, that left uh, J.C. Hassenhauer at center early in practice. J.C. Hassenhauer goes down, then B.J. Finney goes down. Yep. That meant we saw a lot of John LeGlue at center today. He's, a, he's an offensive tackle. Uh, Mike Tomlin said that you know that that's one of the things that happens here. You know, and especially when you have one player out, all of a sudden then other guys end up getting hurt at the same position, and that's what happened at the center position today for the Steelers. And uh, you know, so they were forced to get down to you know their fifth and sixth centers uh, in some situations there. Uh, but uh, according to Tom, when they had that plan in place, uh, these were the guys that they wanted to look at. Well, uh, on other than injury news, um, I know today you're writing a piece on Chase Claypool. Uh, we got to talk to him a little bit today. Uh, what'd you uh, What'd you get to ask him, and what'd you hear from him? Uh, you know, I just wanted to find out, you know, what he did uh, training wise off season. Um, how do you build on that on that rookie year? Um, you know, there's some similarities there between him and DK Metcalf in terms of size, speed, that kind of thing. And you saw DK Metcalf make a big jump in year two uh, compared to what he was in year one. He and Chase Claypool, so almost identical numbers from their rookie years. Uh, you know, can Claypool make that same kind of uh, leap in year two? Uh, this team will be a lot better off if he does. And, uh, you know, we'll see if that happens. What do you think? Uh, what do you think the outlook is for him in a Matt Canada offense as opposed to a Randy Fickner offense? You know, I think that's, that's to, to be determined. Um, you know, I, we'll see how he's used. Um, we saw last year, especially early in the season, a lot of jet sweep action with Chase Claypool. Uh, that kind of went away as the season went on. I think teams kind of caught on to it. In fact, I asked him just that. Uh, and here's what he had to say about that. Yeah, I think teams definitely caught on to it. So I think we're trying to mix things up a little bit and make a couple things look the same. You still feel confident still running that way? Oh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what they do. Like you kind of caught teams off surprise, you were by surprise too, or? Um, yeah, I think I did, but then, you know, I think I still play well, even sure. if they think they I like understand the player I am and stuff like that here. All right. Well, getting back to the practice field, uh, we had a couple of uh, pretty crazy things happen today. Uh, to start. Uh, the first thing I noticed was the uh, little chippiness between the uh, the offensive line and the defensive line today in practice. Uh, you got a chance to talk to Tomlin about that. Uh, what, what what happened? <laughs> yeah, uh, Cam Hayward and Dan Moore uh, Jr., the, the rookie, uh, got into it a little bit on one snap, first, the first snap of team. And, uh, they were doing some inside run stuff. And then uh, they came back and went and went back at each other again uh, on the second snap of that. And it was actually a little pass uh, to the flat to to Najee Harris, and you know they were trying to double team Cam Hayward on that play, and he was having none of it. And then he and Moore started going back again uh, at each other again. Um, you know, it's not something new for Cam Hayward. Cam Hayward's rookie year, he got it. I think he fought every guy on the offensive <laughs> line at one point or another. Um, you know, if you're if you're Dan Moore Jr., um, you probably a you don't want to do that. As, as Mike Tomlin said, you know we're training football players and we're not training MMA fighters. So. Right. Um, you know, you, you don't want to do that, especially with a guy like Cam Hayward. You don't want to, you know, suddenly uh, or, or accidentally hurt, get a guy like that hurt. Um, but it does show some backbone there that, yeah. that uh, you know, he's willing to, to, to stand up for himself in those situations. You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a double-edged sword because you're, you know, you're battling your own teammates. And obviously, you can't fight in a football game. So you can't do that kind of stuff. So um, part of camp, usually you don't see that until the, the second or third week of training camp. Uh, this this time around is the third day of training camp and we're already seeing it. Well, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll switch over to the defensive side of the ball. We had some things happen in practice with that. Uh, this is Steelers Today. I'm Eddie Provident. This is Dale Lawley. We'll be right back. 
All right, well, welcome back to Steelers Today on DK Pittsburgh Sports. I'm your host, Eddie Provident, and with me is our editor-in-chief and Steelers expert, Dale Lawley. Uh, Dale, we talked about the offensive side of the ball today. Uh, I want to get to the defensive side of the ball because uh, I saw a pretty athletic play during uh, team, uh, team on Team today that from somebody you normally wouldn't expect to see an athletic play from. Uh, Robert Spillane had a pretty uh, pretty nice inter- one-handed interception today. Yeah, and, and it, was, it was a nice play by Rob and, and uh, you know dropping into coverage. You know, we saw him make some plays like that last year, the, the, the interception that he had in particular against Lamar Jackson down in, in uh, Baltimore. Uh, but this was a one-handed grab. He, he undercut the, the wide receiver on the play uh, and, uh, you know, caught the ball one-handed. It was a nice play. Uh, you know, Mike Tomlin talked about, you know, that and, and how the expectation is for Robert Spillane to continue to do that. The interesting thing about it was that Tomlin wouldn't say that Spillane is automatically the starter. You're keeping it with the uh, linebacking core, I want to get a little bit into Melvin Ingram. I know we talked about him on Tuesday, on day one, uh, but he got a chance to talk with the media today, and I, I was impressed with some of the things that he had to say. In particular, uh, he was asked about his explosiveness and his, uh, you know, will he still have that? Does he still have that? And he said that he would have been ready to go uh, for a for for camp or for any uh, team activities uh, at the beginning of the off season. He said he was ready to go, and he's. He's, uh, he wanted a one-year deal, he said. He said he wanted to uh, really show people uh, what he still has in the tank. Um, I expect him to get some pretty decent snaps uh, alongside Alex Highsmith and TJ Watt. Um, what do you think about Melvin Ingram and his outlook on this football team? Well, I think he certainly improves their depth there. And we'll see, you know, I, I wrote about that uh, yesterday about, you know, they, they have used that three outside linebacker package specifically against mm-hmm. the Ravens to get more speed and, and, and tackling ability on the field. Uh, and Keith Butler talked about it a little bit as well. How they exactly they use him remains to be seen, but at the very least, they've upgraded uh, you know their, their number three spot. And that guy's going to play 10 to 15 snaps every yep. game because you know TJ Watt taps out on occasion. Uh, they're not going to want to run Highsmith out there you know, 100% of the snaps. So you know it, you, you got to have uh, three of those guys. Now they have three. NFL caliber guys, mm-hmm. um, you know, they, they still have Quincy Rocher. They still have Cassius Marsh. We'll see what those guys do here. They can't keep five, uh, mm-hmm. you know, because one thing that you can't expect Melvin Ingram to do at age 32 is play special teams. Right. So we'll see how that all breaks down, but uh, certainly uh, upgraded the position by signing Melvin Ingram. Yeah. And uh, actually to wrap things up, I'm glad you brought special teams up because I, I noticed this on Tuesday and I noticed it again today. I want to just ask you about Danny Smith. You've been here for all eight years of his, of his tenure. Uh, he was hired in 2013. I look. I coach high school football at West Mifflin. I'm around coaches all the time, and I, I love to watch people coach. Uh, I have never seen anybody that is excited, as excited about coaching, and is into it, and coaches as hard as Danny Smith coaches special teams. I don't know. That I, it, it's something about special teams coaches because I've never seen a special team teams coach at the NFL level who isn't a maniac. <laughs> because here's the thing especially in this kind of setting right now where you have to command the attention on the field of 90 guys you know maybe not all 90 but you've probably got 70 of those guys who are, who are part of your unit there mm-hmm. so you've got to yell and scream and and make sure that you're coming across to all those guys because you know i mean you know how it is with steeler fans if somebody doesn't do something right on a special teams play fire danny smith right. they obviously didn't go over that when you see that they dedicate a lot of time in every practice to it and 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 i hear him driving these points home to these guys, whether they, you know, whether it sinks in or not, that's on the player, but they go over these things, you know, fair catching, uh, you know, free kicks and things mm-hmm. of that nature. There's not a stone that's left unturned there, nope, not at uh, all. but but every special teams coach that I've ever seen, uh, you know, working over here is a maniac. They just are. Because yeah. again, you, you have so many guys you work with and you probably don't get any real meeting time with those guys mm-hmm. because they're going to their tight end meeting or they're going to their DB meeting or the running back meetings. You're meeting in the middle of the field over there, right. you know, at the 50 yard line when you're going over stuff. That's probably the, the extent of it. Maybe they have one special teams meeting a week during the regular season to kind of go over, you know, the, the you know, some of the formations and stuff right. the other team uses. But in, in the grand scheme of things, you've got to command a lot of guys' attention very quickly. Yeah. And I, if you're going to uh, camp next week, if you're if you have a ticket, I would encourage you to definitely check out because you won't miss Danny Smith. You won't miss him on the field as small as he is. Uh, you will definitely hear him from the top uh, from the top rows. Uh, I think that covers day three. Uh, we have day four early tomorrow morning. Uh, so we will be back here on the south side uh, for Dale Lolly uh, for DK Pittsburgh Sports. I'm Eddie Provident. Thanks for tuning in this week. We'll catch you tomorrow.